Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on scale and standard form. The good news is, this video does not depend on any prior knowledge other than some really basic maths. So, in this video, we'll be looking at scale, at converting units, um, then we'll look at standard form, and we'll look at a load of worked examples for standard form. Okay, so let's look at the idea of scale. Um, this is sometimes referred to as the order of magnitude as well, magnitude being a fancy scientific word for size. So the key idea we're looking at is that science um, often deals both with very large and very small quantities. And so it can get a bit frustrating saying you know, 100 billion of this or 200 million of that. And then so instead we use these um, words to represent those millions and billions, which we call prefixes. So a prefix is um, the beginning of a word and it's used to represent the scale of something so for example at larger scales if we have the word or the prefix kilo in front of a word that means a thousand of that thing that is 10 to the power of three and we represent that with a lowercase k uh, when we're writing units if we had a million of something we would call that mega um, the prefix would be mega with a capital m and that is 10 to the power of six if we had a billion of something, we call that giga, with a capital G for its prefix, and 10 to the power of 9. And if we had a trillion of something, which isn't, doesn't happen very often, but it does happen, um, we refer to that as terra something, with a capital T for its um, unit, and that is 10 to the power of 12. Now that's working at very large scales. If we're working at very small scales, we might talk about centi, that is a hundredth of something, like a centimetre. Um, lowercase c to represent centi and that is 10 to the minus 2. 10 to the minus 2 means we are dividing by a hundred. We might have milli which means a thousandth of something that's got a little lowercase m for its symbol and that is 10 to the minus 3 of something i.e. that is dividing by a thousand. We've got micro which means a millionth of something. Now micro has this symbol here this is the Greek letter, the Greek letter mu, uh, which is the Greek version of an M. And we use mi we use that micro symbol, the mu there, because uh, the the lowercase M is already taken up by milli, and that is ten to the minus six of something. And then we might talk about nano. Nano something means we've got a billionth of whatever we had. Um, and the symbol for that is a lowercase n, that's 10 to the minus 9. And lastly, pico, and we very rarely meet this, but we might. Um, a, a pico uh, is a trillionth of something. It's got this lowercase p there, and that is 10 to the minus 12 lots of something. Now, all of these different scales are usually applied to um, units of measurement. So let's have a look at that on the next slide. So, look at some examples. What about with length? So we know our basic unit for length is the metre. And if we had a thousand metres, we'd call that a kilometre. But we also know that if we work down the um, scale, we might have a hundredth of a metre, which is a centimetre, because we know there's a hundred centimetres in one metre. Going lower still, we've got a millimetre, that's a thousandth of a metre. A micrometre, which is a millionth of a metre. A nanometer, which is a billionth of a meter, and finally we've got a picometer, which is a trillionth of a meter. If we look at the units for energy, and we've got loads of these, our basic unit is joules, capital J. But we could have a thousand joules, which we call a kilojoule. We could have a million joules, which is called a megajoule. A billion joules is called a gigajoule, and a trillion joules is called a terajoule. And equally, going smaller. A thousandth of a joule is called a millijoule. A millionth of a joule is called a microjoule. A billionth of a joule is called a nanojoule. And a trillionth of a joule is called a picojoule. And what about mass? We use these units for mass as well. Now, um, if we think about our basic unit as being grams, that's not quite true because normally we say that the SI unit, the you know, the fundamental unit for um, mass is kilograms, um, but the naming of our units is actually based off of grams instead. 
So um, one gram, a thousand grams would be our kilogram. And then going smaller, we might talk about a milligram, which is a thousandth of a gram, a microgram, which is a millionth of a gram, a nanogram, which is a billionth of a gram, and finally a picogram, which is a trillionth of a gram. Okay, so now we've met our prefixes, let's look at how we can convert our units. And um, we'll start by looking at converting um, to smaller units. So we're going to be working on this side of this table here. So when we convert to a smaller unit, we're going to need to multiply our number um, by some number of thousands normally. Let's look at our first example then. So we're going to try and convert 10 kilograms into grams. Um, now, if we look at where kilograms is, kilo is up here and grams has no prefix, so it is there. And to get from kilo to our basic unit, you can see that we are going to multiply by 1,000. So our answer will be nice and easy. We'll do 10 multiplied by 1,000, and that will give us 10,000 grams as our final answer. Let's look at a slightly harder one. This time, we've got 25 centimetres being converted to micrometers. Now, centimetres are here, and micrometers is down there. So, so we, we've got a two-step conversion here. We're going to multiply by 10 first to convert centimetres into millimetres, and then we're going to multiply by 1,000 to convert those millimetres into micrometers. So if we do multiplying by 10 and then multiplying by 1,000, that is the same as multiplying by 10,000. So let's try and do that. We'll do 25 multiplied by 10,000. And that will give us a final answer of 250,000 micrometers. Just like that. OK. And for our last example, we're going to look at trying to convert 0.43 gigajoules into joules. Now, gigajoules are right up here near the top. And we're going to try and convert into the basic unit joules down here. So we are going to need to multiply by a thousand to go from giga to mega, then by another thousand to go from mega to kilo, and then by a final thousand to go from kilo to our basic unit. So if we are doing multiplying by a thousand, and then by a thousand, and then by another thousand, that is the same as multiplying something by one billion, one with nine zeros after it. So let's have a look at that. We're going to do 0.43 multiplied by one billion, our one with nine zeros. And that is going to give us an answer of 430 million joules, like that. OK, so to summarise, when we are converting from a larger unit to a, to a smaller unit, we will be multiplying by some number of thousands for the most part. What about converting the other way around? Well, to convert the other way around, we're going to be looking at this left side of the table. So to convert from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, we're going to be dividing, again, normally by a number of thousands. So let's look at our first one. Let's convert 13 milligrams into grams. Now, milligrams are here, and grams are here. So to do that conversion, we're going to need to just divide by 1,000. So we're going to do 13 divided by 1,000. That equals 0 0.013 grams as our final answer. OK, let's look at a slightly harder one. This time we're going to convert 400 picometers, that's PM, into micrometers. Remember that Greek mu representing micro. So picometers is right down here. So that is um, trillionths of a metre down there. And then micrometers is up here. That is millionths of a metre. So we've got a two-step conversion here. We need to divide by a thousand to convert pico into nano, and then by another thousand to convert nano into micro. So if we do that, if we're dividing by a thousand, and then we're dividing by another thousand, that is the same as dividing by one million. 
So let's try that. We'll do 400 divided by 1 million. And that will give us 0 0.0004. Micrometers as our final answer. Okay, let's look at one last one. Um, this is convert 760 millijoules into megajoules. Now, millijoules are here, millijoules are here, and megajoules are all the way up here. So that's a three stage conversion. We're going to first of all divide by a thousand to turn milli into our basic units. Then we'll divide by another thousand to, give, to turn our basic units into kilo joules. And then we'll divide by one final thousand to turn our kilo joules into megajoules. So we've got three lots of dividing by a thousand. You can probably see where this is going. If we divide by a thousand three times, what we're really doing is dividing by one billion. So that's one with nine zeros after it. Okay, so that's Let's do that. So um, we're going to do 760 divided by 1 billion. So 1 with 9 zeros. And that will give us 0 0 0.00000760 um, megajoules like that. Now that's a very silly unit conversion. You'd never really need to do that, but what we've done is we've just applied the principle. Now, you'll see that last answer, 0 0.00000760. That's a very clumsy way to write that number, and it's much better represented with something called standard form, which is what we'll look at on the next couple of slides. Okay, so what is standard form? Standard form is a way of expressing numbers in terms of powers of 10. So for example, rather than writing 1 million, I could write 1 times 10 to the power of 6. How does that work? Well, let's have a think about what we mean by 10 to the power of 6. 10 to the power of 6 is just a more compact way of writing out 1 million, like this. Okay. So when we say 1 times 10 to the power of 6, what we mean is 1 lot of 1 million. What about a second example? 345,000. This can be written as 3.45 times 10 to the power of 5. Again, let's think about how this works. 10 to the power of 5 is a compact way of writing 100,000. 1 followed by 5 zeros. Okay. So when we say 3.45 times 10 to the power of 5, what we mean, what we mean is 3.45 lots of 100,000. And that is all 345,000 is. 3.45 lots of 100,000. And let's look at one last example. Um, 7 billion 951 million can be written as 7.951 times 10 to the power of 9. And again, let's think about why. That 10 to the power of 9 is a compact way of writing out 1 billion. So that is 1 followed by nine zeros like that so when we say 7.951 times 10 to the 9 we're saying 7.951 lots of a billion which is exactly what that number there is now why is this a useful thing to do well it can be a useful way to represent very large numbers that take a long time to write and can be confusing to read as well um, so for example in chemistry we talk a lot about the number a mole which is this huge long number here 6.02 followed by another 18, um, sorry, uh, followed by another 21 zeros. Now, rather than writing out all those 21 zeros, it's much quicker and easier and actually clearer once you're used to this. It's much easier to write this just as 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 instead. Now, one of the things that you need to be able to do with standard form is to convert numbers that are bigger than one into standard form. For example, 1,400, what is that as standard form? So to do this, we're going to just work through this process um, 
in this little uh, diagram here. So we're going to start by writing the first non-zero digit, um, followed by a decimal point. I put that bit in brackets because um, if there's only one digit in our number that's greater than zero, we don't need to do the decimal point. But we have got other things here, so we'll go with one point. Then we write in the remaining non-zero digits, so in this case, 1.4. Then it says to count the number of digits after the first number and before any decimals. So I have got, I've got three numbers there after the first number and before any decimals. So that then will become my power of 10. So I go 10 to the power of 3 because of that 3 there. Now it's always worth a little sense check of your answer. 10 to the power of 3 is um, 1000. And so we should be looking at a number in the thousands and that is what we've got there. What about a second example, 23,500? Well, let's work through the same process. So first of all, we write down the first non-zero digit, which is two. Um, and because there are multiple digits after that that aren't zero, we'll put a decimal point and put the remaining non-zero digits after that. So 2.35 now. Okay. Then we count the number of digits after the, f after the first one and before any decimal points. So that's these, those digits there. Uh, that is four of those. Um, so that becomes my power of 10. So we go times 10 to the power of 4. And again, let's do our little sense check. 10 to the power of 4 equals 10,000. So is the value I've got in the 10,000s? Yes, it is. Next one, what about this? One point, so 125.6. Let's follow the same process and see how that works. Now, you might be thrown by that decimal point but there's no need to. So let's see how this works. Same as before, we write down our first digit followed by that decimal point. Okay. And then we write down any remaining non-zero digits. So 256. So it becomes 1.256. And then we count the number of digits after the first one and before the decimal point. So that is just those two digits there. So that becomes my power. So I go times 10 to the power of 2. And again, let's do a sense check. 10 to the power of 2 equals 100. So my answer, or my uh, initial value, should be in the hundreds. And yeah, that is in the hundreds. So let's do one last one. We're going to look at this number here. Um, three, oh, let me just check that number. Um, 305 million. Again, let's follow the same process. So write down our first digit first of all, so that is a three, followed by a decimal point and any remaining non-zero digits. Now, yes, I know that there is a zero, but because it's followed by a five, it does count. So we're gonna go 3.05 like that, okay? Then we count the number of digits after the first number and before any decimals. So, ooh, hold on, there, like that. And that is eight digits there. So we're going to say one time uh, 3.05 times 10 to the power of eight this time. And again, let's check our answer. Um, so 10 to the power of eight is 100 million. 100 followed by eight zeros like that. And is our number in the 100 billions? Yes, it is. OK, so now we've looked at how to convert numbers into standard form. Let's try and look at how we convert from standard form back to being a regular number. So our first example is 6 times 10 to the power of 3. Now, our method here is we're going to start out by writing out the number without its decimal point, if there is one, but there isn't in this case. So we're going to start just by writing the number 6. OK, then what we're going to do is we're going to think about our power and we're going to add 1 to the power. Okay, So where it says 10 to the power of 3, we're going to add 1 to make that a 4. Now that tells us how many digits our number needs to have before its decimal point. So what we can do then is just add enough zeros to make the number up to 4 digits long. So in this case, I'm going to add another 3 zeros 
to turn my 6 times 10 to the minus 3 into 6,000 as my final answer. Now there is this little step down here. It says if the number is longer than this, add a decimal point at this position. But we don't have to worry about that just yet, although we will see that in future examples. And the last thing to do, a bit like last time, is to do a bit of a sense check. So 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. So we should be expecting an answer in the thousands, and that's exactly what we've got. What about our next example, 5.04 times 10 to the power of 2? Well, let's start by writing out our number without its decimal point, much like we did last time. So we're going to say 5, 0, 4 without that decimal point. Now we need to think about how long the number needs to be by looking at this power. So the power is 2. We're going to add 1 to it, and that's going to give us 3. So we're looking for our number to be 3 digits long. Um, and actually, it already is 3 digits long, so that's absolutely perfect. So our answer there is 504. Again, let's do a little sense check. 10 to the power of 2 is 100. So we should be looking for an answer in the hundreds, and that's exactly what we've got. Example number three, similar, but um, we've got a slight problem this time. So it says 5.045 times 10 to the power of 2. So much like last one, we're going to start by writing out our number without its decimal point. So we're going to say 5, 0, 4, 5. Then we need to think about how long the number needs to be by looking at that power and adding 1 to it. Um, and that gives us a length of three digits. Now you can start to see the problem. Our number is four digits long. So that's where we come down to this bottom bullet point here about if the number is longer than this, add a decimal point at that position. So at the third position, we're going to add a decimal point. So one, two, three, there goes my decimal point. And now that's our final answer, just like that. And again, let's do our sense check. We saw from last time that 10 to the power of two equals 100. So we're looking for an answer in the 100, and 504.5 is in the hundreds. What about our last example? 9.52 times 10 to the power of 8. We've got a much bigger power this time, but that doesn't matter. It's not going to affect the way we try and approach our uh, problem. It works with the exact same method. So we're going to start off by writing out our number without its decimal point. So 952. Then we think about how long the number needs to be by adding 1 to the power to give us 9. So this should be 9 digits long. So this section here about adding zeros is going to take us a while because we've got 3 digits and we want a total of 9. So we need to add 6 zeros. So 952 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros there to give us our final answer. And again, let's do our sense check. Um, so 10 to the power of 8 is this number, this is um, 100 million, two, three, there we go, there's my eight zeros, so that's 100 million, and so we should be expecting an answer in the 100 millions, and this is 952 million, and so therefore we can be confident that that's the correct answer. Okay, so now we're going to look at how we can convert numbers that are smaller than 1 into standard form. We'll follow a similar process with the numbers that were greater than 1, but we, we're going to have to tweak it slightly, as you'll see. And the main thing you'll notice is that we'll have to use negative powers of 10 rather than positive powers of 10. So let's have a look at how this works. Our first example is 0 0.004. And the first thing that we'll do is we're going to write down the first non-zero digit followed by a decimal point if there's multiple non-zero digits, but in this case there is only one non-zero digit, so we're just going to write 4. Okay. The next step, um, we can skip that bit, we'll look at that in our next example. So we're going to come down to this third point, which is to count the number of digits from the decimal point to the first non-zero digit inclusive. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, and that 3, that's going to be our negative power of 10 which is our final step. So we're going to say multiplied by 10 to the negative 3. And that is our answer. Again, let's do our little sense check. So 10 to the power of negative 3 is 0 0.001. So we should be expecting an answer in the thousandths. And that is exactly what we've got here. Okay. 
Next one, 0 0.0516. So let's do the same thing as last time. We start off by writing down our first non-zero digit, which is that 5. Then we follow it with a decimal point this time because there are multiple non-zero digits. And we, write the, and we write the remaining digits after the uh, decimal point. So that's the 1 and the 6. Now we need to think about our negative power of 3. So remember, we're counting the number of digits from the decimal point to the first non-zero digit inclusive. So our decimal point is here. So we're going to go 1. And then our 5 is in that second decimal place. So that will be our negative power will be 2. So we're going to say times 10 to the negative 2 as our answer. Now, again, let's do our little sense check. So 10 to the minus 2 is the hundredths. So 0 0.01 is 100. And so we should be getting an answer in terms of hundredths. And again, that's what we've got. That, that 5 there is in the hundredths position. And so we can be confident that that's the right answer. Example number three, getting a bit harder now. You can start to see now why using standard form is quite useful because when you start to see lots and lots of zeros at the start of the number, it can be very hard to make sense of them and it becomes much easier to interpret them when we've just got that negative power because it does the counting for us. Um, so in this case, well, we've got 0 0.00000780 um, So we're going to follow the exact same method as before. We'll start by writing down our first non-zero digit, which is 7. Then we'll do our decimal point and we'll put the remaining digits. Now, this one, that zero in the middle there, yes, that is zero. But because it's mixed in with, with uh, in between the 8 and the 1, it still counts. So we're going to write 7.801 like that. And now we're going to do our negative power of 10. Remember, we're counting the number of digits from the decimal point to the first non-zero one. So we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So uh, our 7 is on the sixth decimal point, or place rather. So we're going to go 7.801 times 10 to the negative 6. And that will be our final answer. Again, let's do a bit of a sense check here. 10 to the minus 6 is 0 0.123456, like that. Um, which is the millionths and so we should be expecting an answer in terms of millionths and that is what we've got there that sixth decimal place is our millionths position and lastly uh, example number four again really starting to hammer home that point about why standard form is useful because when we see a great big number like that with so many uh, zeros in our decimal point uh, in, our, in our decimal places it can be really confusing to make sense of so what we've got here is 0 0.00000000816. Now, we're going to follow the exact same method as before. And, you know, we really can see that all those zeros make it hard to interpret. Um, so we're going to start out by writing the 8, put our decimal point, and then the 1 and the 6. Then we need to work out our negative power of 10. So let's give this a go. Our... 8 is in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is in the 11th uh, position. So we're going to say 8.16 times 10 to the negative 11. And I would do our sense check, but we're in such big decimal places there. It doesn't quite make sense to do so. Um, but the key thing is, just note that our 8 is starting on that 11th decimal point, or decimal place rather, and therefore it will be times 10 to the minus 11. Now the last thing that we need to be able to do is to convert numbers written in standard form with negative powers of 10 back into the normal uh, way of writing a decimal number. So let's have a look at this. Our first example is 6 times 10 to the minus 3. And the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to, ignoring the minus, we're going to subtract 1 from the power. So we've got 3 here. We're going to do 3, take away 1, equals 2, like that. OK. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add 0 point and then as many extra zeros as the number we just wrote. So in this case, we're going to write 0 point followed by two more zeros, 0, 0. And then all we do 
is write our number here um, without any decimal point. So we just go 0 0.006 and that's it. Job done. So what this has told us is that our number here starts on that third decimal point. Next one, 5.04 times 10 to the negative 2. So again, we're going to try the same thing. We'll start with that power. We'll subtract 1 from it to give us 1. And so that tells us we're going to go 0, 0.0 like that. So 0 and then that 1 extra 0. And then just write in our 5.04 without the decimal point. So 0 0.0504. Easy peasy. Just like that. And what we'll see similar here, um, 5.045 times 10 to the minus 5. Start with our um, negative power, take 1 off it, and that gives us 4. So that tells us we're going to do 0 point, followed by a further 4 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we just write in the rest of our number without its decimal point. So 5045, oh, just like that. And finally, what about 9.52 times 10 to the negative 8? Well, start by working out the number of uh, zeros at the beginning. So minus 8, take away 1, equals uh, 7, or 8, take away 1, equals 7. So we're going to go 0 point, followed by a, another 7 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, and then lastly, we're going to write in our number without its decimal point. So just 9, 5, 2, like that. And that's it. Bish, bash, bosh. Okay, so that's it. The end. As always, thank you for listening and well done if you got this far.